Hey everybody, welcome back. Mr. Bennett here, and we are in part three of our DNA series. Uh, we skipped over part two. I didn't make a video about it. You can go and look at my old YouTube video about DNA replication if you would like to. And there's also a really good animation that shows you the steps of replication, and that's linked in the description below. I did draw out some notes kind of like this, so if you like this visual style, um, those are linked in the description as well, and you can jump over to Flickr, save a copy for yourself, do whatever you want. Um, but we're, I'm calling this part three because we've got DNA storage and structure, and then we looked at DNA replication. Um, when we're uh, duplicating our genes to get ready for mitosis, and now we're in DNA transcription. And the, the, the guiding question for this is, if DNA holds all of the information for our cell functions, how is that information interpreted by the cell? And it's a two-step process, and it, the, the processes are transcription and translation. They go hand in hand. And today we're going to focus on transcription, uh, where we have a DNA template from our cell, and we create an mRNA strand, a messenger RNA strand. Translation is when we take that mRNA strand and we translate it using tRNA as part of the ribosome complex to produce a polypeptide chain. So that tRNA brings the amino acids, the ribosome links them up together, you get your polypeptide, and then you can build a protein and you can carry out some kind of function. Um, so there's a lot of, a lot of uh, still talking about enzymes, still talking about cell processes, but today we're sticking to the left side of this little T-chart, uh, looking at transcription first. So the next question is, where is this happening inside of our cell? If you were to zoom in on a cell, and we, so right now we've got kind of a cutaway of a cell, and that, that large um, organelle in the middle is your nucleus. And I know it's the nucleus because we've got some genetic material inside there. Um, that genetic material always stays in the nucleus. And think about it, it makes sense. If I'm a cell, I need to protect my genetic material because if I don't have instructions on how to do my job, I can't do my job. So DNA never leaves the cell, and or excuse me, never leaves the nucleus. It doesn't leave the cell either, but it doesn't leave the nucleus. And so the way the cell maintains that is on the, the, the membrane of the nucleus. If I'm transcribing my DNA template, I've got to get that messenger RNA out so it can build a protein out in the cytoplasm. So if you look on the membrane of the nucleus, the mRNA, it exits through small pores in the nuclear membrane. It's not a solid organelle. There's little pores in it, and those pores are big enough to allow mRNA to kind of snake their way out, and the DNA is held inside because DNA stays clumped up. Um, transcription, unlike replication, does not unwind the entire chromatin strand. It's just going at portions of that chromosome to uh, maybe a gene is activated, and we need to get instructions to build a protein that is encoded by that gene. Um, so all of this right now in the transcription phase, or in the transcription stage rather, is happening inside the nuclear membrane, inside of our nucleus. And remember, because we have a nucleus, we are in a eukaryotic cell. Um, and the process of transcription is, is similar to replication. A lot of the enzymes are similar. They're not exactly the same, but you're gonna recognize some names. And the first major thing is that uh, in order to get to a gene, we have to unwind a portion of our chromosome. We have to unwind a portion of that chromatin. So there are some topoisomerases involved to find that find that region of a gene and you know untwist it, untwist that supercoil and stretch it out so that we can get at the base pair because those base pair sequences are what the gene uh, or what holds the encoding for that gene. We've got to be able to open them up. Now there's a second part that's very special when we're talking about transcription. All genes have a region called a promoter, and a promoter is what is Kind of targeted by the RNA polymerase. So remember in replication, we had DNA polymerase, we build DNA strands. In transcription, we're building mRNA using a DNA template, and so our enzyme is called RNA polymerase. That promoter region is targeted by the mRNA polymerase, or by the RNA polymerase, and our good friend helicase helps with this as well. So we've got the topoisomerases that stretch out your DNA, and now we've got our double helix, anti-parallel strands. We find the promoter region, Helicase comes in and DNA, or excuse me, an RNA polymerase comes in and it pops open a little bubble. It's called a transcription bubble. Uh, and that bubble is about 14 base pairs long, depending on the, the, the organism you're in, but it's very, very small. And again, because we want to protect that genetic information, uh, we only want to open up the portion that we need. And so as this RNA polymerase chugs through that genetic code, chugs, chugs through that template strand, helicase in front of it opens it up, and then there's a following enzyme complex uh, behind the polymerase that closes that DNA back up and retwists it, rewinds it back up into a stored supercoil. So there's a very complex mechanism, but the gist of it is uh, we find a promoter region, RNA polymerase latches on. Remember, DNA is always red in a three to five prime direction, and that is because we have to build our genetic information, in this case, RNA, mRNA. We have to build it in a five prime to three prime direction. And remember, it's because of the energy required to break a bond and to form a new bond. So 
very, very similar to replication. Again, if we go from start to finish, we unwind our strand, a, pr a promoter region on a gene is targeted, helicase comes in along with an RNA polymerase, they open up a rep or a transcription bubble, we read our template three to five, we are spitting out mRNA behind us in a five to three direction. When you get to the terminator region, uh, there's a region of this gene on the exon, remember the coding portion. When we reach the terminator, RNA polymerase says, oh, I'm done, it falls off, DNA closes back up, supercoils back into your chromatin, and the helicase goes off and it finds something else. So this is happening constantly in your body, in your cells as they're building proteins. And remember, this is only the first step of the process. Uh, so we're gonna stop there for today. It's a really quick, short video. Main ideas, right? Uh, so we're in part one of two. We're not replicating anymore. Now we're actually producing a protein using the genetic information. In the next video, we'll look at translating that information using a tRNA, a translation RNA molecule, as well as a ribosome complex, um, and how those two work together to build a polypeptide chain.